सो गुड इवनिंग गाइस आई एम रितेश कुमार सिन्हा एंड्रॉइड फैसिलिटेटर फ्रॉम डेवलपर स्टूडेंट क्लब सी बी आर जी यू एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू द सेशन ऑफ एंड्रॉइड स्टडी जैम प्रेजेंटेड बाय द कोलैबोरेशन ऑफ डेवलपर स्टूडेंट क्लब सी बी आर जी यू एंड डेवलपर स्टूडेंट क्लब गीता आई होप मेनी ऑफ यू हैव स्टार्टेड द न्यू टू प्रोग्रामिंग ट्रैक एंड होपफुली सम ऑफ यू मस्ट हैव कम्प्लीटेड द बिगिनर ट्रैक सो लेट्स बिगिन द जर्नी ऑफ एंड्रॉयड विथ कोटलिन so let us dive into the kotlin playground where we will start practicing kotlin codes the link to the kotlin playground is displayed on the screen <clears throat> so guys can you guess what does this code do yes it will print hello world so now let us understand the code one by one that i showed you earlier this code so fun fun is a word in kotlin that stands for the function it is a section of program that performs specific task function main here the main defines the name of the function it is the first or main function that is called when you run the program always note guys that function main always followed by a parenthesis inside the parenthesis you can pass the arguments and the println defines that it tells the system to print a new line so let's move ahead so guys can you please write this code in the kotlin playground so here you can see that num is assigned 4 so we wrote num equal to 4 and we print num is dollar curly braces num so guys can you think what is the significance of dollar curly braces so the significance is that instead of printing the text it will print the value of the variable as you can see that we have assigned the value of the num equal to 4 and we when we print num is dollar and curly braces num so it will print the value of that num that is 4 so the output will be number is 4 <clears throat> so guys i hope you all might be having a confusion that what it means by val and var so where by using where keyword we can assign a variable multiple times and it is also called as mutable variable well is same as final modifier in java as you probably know we cannot assign to a final variable again but can change its property so while is a constant variable and cannot be assigned multiple times and is known as immutable variable <clears throat> now coming to the repeat statement in the kotlin you can see here there is a code where there is a main function and inside a main function first of all print border function is called again we are printing welcome to android study jam and again calling the print border function after the main function is closed we define print for border function where we define repeat statement and inside repeat statement it's printing star 29 times so now all of you might be wondering that what is the use of repeat and what may be the probable output <clears throat> so guys the output here will be like this there will be 29 stars then it will print welcome to and study jam and then it will print again 29 star as you can see in the main function first of all we call print border that is printing 29 star then it's printing welcome to and study jam in the next line and again it's printing border the print border function is called that is printing 29 star <clears throat> so basically kotlin repeat statement is used when a set of statements has to be executed n number of times now coming to the classes and object in kotlin so guys you can see the code over here there is a main function where we have initialized the object of dice class as my first dice then we are printing my first dice dot size and then we are calling my first dice dot roll so after the main function we have made a class named dice where we have <coughs> assigned sides equal to 6 a variable side equal to 6 and then we are making a function roll where we we have assigned random number equal to 1 to 6 dot random so any number between 1 to 6 and then we are printing that random number so can you guess what this code will do <coughs> so first of all it will print the sides my first dice dot side you can see over here that we are printing my first dice dot side so it will print 6 after that it will my it will call my first dice dot roll and in the function roll 
we can see that random number has been assigned any random number between 1 to 6 and it is printing that random number. So it can be any random number between 1 to 6. So after 6, it will print any number between 1 to 6. That will be the random number. So now let's summarizing. Classes are the blueprint of runtime entity and object it is state which include both state and behavior. In Netcell, a class is similar to an architect blueprint plan are not the house. They are the instruction of how to build the house. The house is actually the object instance created according to the blueprint. As you can refer to the previous code, the class was the dice and its instance was my first dice. <clears throat> now coming to the one of the most important part that is view hierarchy. As we know, a view inside another view creates an hierarchy. The outer view becomes the pa parent and the inner views are the child. On Android platform, you define an activity UI using hierarchy of views and view group nodes as shown in the figure. The hierarchy tree can be as simple or complex as you need it to be or you can build it up using Android set of predefined widgets and layout or with custom views that you create yourself. In order to attack the view hierarchy tree to the screen for rendering, your activity must call the set content view method and pass a reference to the root node object. The Android system receives this reference and uses it to invalidate, measure and draw the tree. The root node of hierarchy requests that its child node draw themselves. In turn, each view group node is responsible for calling upon each of its own child view to draw themselves. The children may request a size and location within the parent, but parent object has final decision on where, how big each child can be. And it passes the element of your layout from top of hierarchy tree, instantiating the new and adding them to the parent. So you can see the complete view hierarchy in the Android. <clears throat> now coming to the linear layout. Linear layout is a view group that aligns all its children in single direction, maybe horizontally or vertically. You can specify the direction within Android colon orientation attribute and you can specify whether it can be horizontal or it can be vertical. Now coming to relative layout, it is a view group that displays child view in relative position. The position of each view can be specified as relative to sibling element or in position relative to parent layout area. Now coming to the one of the most important constraint layout. A constraint layout allow you to create large and complex layout with a flat view hierarchy. It is more flexible than relative layout and is easier to use with Android Studio layout editor. To define a view position in constant layout, you may, must add at least one horizontal and one vertical constant for the views. So you can see over here how we are adding constraints to our layout. So this is all from my part and after doing these all things, you will earn the batches. That is the most important part of Android Study Jam. So now I would request Aman to go ahead. Aman, please. Thank you, Ritesh, for this wonderful explanation. So now that you all have the idea about Kotlin and a bit of Android as well, let's move forward and learn some more stuff about Android Studio. Hello, everyone. This is Aman. Android facilitator at the AC Gita. Let's start this session without further ado. In this session, what we are going to do and learn is we will learn about if else and when statement. We will build our first Android app and then we will create an AVD. What's an AVD? It's Android virtual device also known as as emulator. After that, we will run the app we just created in the emulator as well as in your mobile phone. We will add a button to the app and then add behavior to it. After that, we will learn about toast messages as well. So let's start it. So uh, let's start with the if else statement. So here you all can see is Kotlin playground where we will practice our Kotlin code. Uh, let me define a variable here. So 
so if you are wondering what is this let me be clear with you this is a variable nums of type int range which will have a range of values from 1 to 6 okay mm, let me have another variable of type int which will have a random value from this range of values like num is a variable of type int which will have a random value from the nums range means between 1 to 6 it will have a random value okay so uh, let's print the value uh, better to write it like uh, random number And let's run it. So here you can see the random number is 6. And if we will run it again, then it might be a different random number. Yeah, 4. Uh, if you want to omit this uh, concatenation, then you can do that too. You just have to enclose this random number inside curly braces the variable inside the curly braces and put a dollar sign above it yeah it's working so moving forward to if and else statement like let me check that if like if else is a conditional statement uh, which will execute a particular set of code depending on the condition so if we will check that the random number is 6 here then we will print hooray it's a 6 else else means it will consider all the cases from 1 to 5 and in this case we'll print better luck next time oh sorry yeah so let's run it yeah we got six and it's printing her rate so six so let's run it again it will generate a different number oh again six i guess i'm lucky now it's two okay so uh changing this to a when statement when statement is uh similar to switch statement in java in this it will uh what check the value with the case values like if we will uh, write like that when random number then it will check the random value this the value of this uh, variable with the case values we will provide in the code inside the curly braces like uh, if the random number is equal to one okay then it will print like one it's one okay and if it's two then we will print like oh, i forgot the t here and it will print it's two and and there is a default case also for the default case you have to write else else print and 
greater than two. Yeah, look, the code is working. So this is the if else statement and when statement. So uh, let's move to the Android Studio, and then uh, we will create our Android app and then emulator and then run the app in the emulator so open the android studio and then click on create new project choose the empty activity template and then click next after that name your project i will name it first jamming then select the language Kotlin and click on finish let the cradle build finish after that we will create an uh, android virtual device yeah it's finished now we will create the AVD click on tools and then go to AVD manager click on create virtual device select the phone from here and select any of the devices you want uh, I would recommend the one which have the play store icon uh, like I will choose the pixel 4 and then click on next and then next and then click on finish so in this way you can create your emulator so now that we have the idea of view groups Let's see how we use them in Android Studio. We have three layouts, uh, linear layout, relative layout, and constant layout. Let's see linear layout first. In linear layout, the, uh, the views are arranged linearly, either horizontal or vertical. So let's increase the size first, text size, 32, uh, it will work. And let me copy the text view so we will have two text views mm -hmm. yeah that's it now we have two text views horizontally arranged uh, let me change the orientation orientation vertical now the text views are oriented vertically so that's it with uh, linear layout let's focus on relative layout in a relative layout the views the child views are arranged in relative positions the position of each view can be specified as relative to sibling elements or in positions relative to the parent relative layout so uh, let me give an id to the first text view so that the second one will be uh, arranged according to the first one text and now I will arrange this text view according to the first text view yeah you can see it's arranged to the right of the text view and now I will arrange it below the text view one we can uh, uh, we can uh, in uh, we can arrange the text view in the center also like just center in parent and write it true Mm, that's it and the text view is in the center of the parent so uh, that's it let's move to the constant layout in constant layout the views are arranged according to the constants that we have given to the uh, views inside the uh, uh, inside the constant layout uh, so 
here is a text view uh, let me add a button yeah the button is here and i will add constant to that button like the left to the left of parent and right to the right of parent and then the top to the bottom of the text view and the bottom to the bottom of the parent yeah you can see that the constants are added like that mm -hmm. yeah now i will move it a little bit upward uh, now it's uh, good So the code looks good. Uh -huh. Now I will add behavior to this button. Uh, rename it to go. And it can be done in two ways like providing an on click attribute to the button or by set on click listener. So I will first set the on click behavior in this file like on click and I will give a name which is a function name which will be executed when this button is clicked go button clicked and i it's red for now because the method is not defined in the class uh, in the main activity so i will define the method in the main activity like uh, first click alt plus enter here and then create go button create in main activity and now if you see the red uh, sign will be uh, disappear and here we have an uh, go button click method in this method whatever we write will be executed when the button is clicked so let's try another method of providing the behavior to the button by using the id like the uh, in this the button have the id button and uh, we will use that id so that we will link that button to the main activity and then we will set a listener to that button and then when the button is clicked we perform the set of instructions so well uh, go button clicked of type button now i will assign it uh, i will link this button to the main activity button like which have the id button uh, find view by id r dot id dot button this will refer to the button in the xml file And now I will set the listener go button dot set on click listener view dot <clears throat> on click listener. Okay, here we will perform the operation uh, let it be a toast message a toast message is a simple message which will be displayed uh, on your phone uh, like this uh, in which we specified the toast message inside the set on click listener of go button so it will display when the go button is clicked toast dot make text and there will be a context this and uh, the text message which will be displayed when the button is clicked I go button clicked and then we will specify the duration uh, toast dot length short or long whatever you want and i will call the show method which will show the toast on the device so uh, now we are done with the activity layout file and the main activity class let's run the app in the emulator just click on here and you can see that the grader build is running 
once the gradle build is uh, finished then the app will run on the emulator I guess it will take a minute or two yeah it's launching the app in the emulator is launched in the emulator here you can see that and the layout is just like we created here and so when we click the go button it will post a message yeah here it is go button clicked so that's it guys we have run our app in the emulator and uh, I wanted to run the app in my phone also but uh, there is a problem with my phone so I can't run my phone uh, I can't run the app in my phone but uh, I can tell you how you can run your app in your phone also first you will uh, first you will connect your phone via USB cable and then you have to turn on the developer options for that you have to go to the settings uh, let me check if i can do that in the emulator like you have to go to settings okay yeah here it is and after that you have to go to about uh, I guess there is no option for that. Mm, yeah. uh, so check here. Mm, no, nothing. Uh, so I'm just dictating it. Like uh, what you have to do is go to the settings and then about and in about you will search for uh, version number or uh, build number sorry build number and tap seven times on that and after that your developer options will be enabled go to the developer options and then enable the USB debugging when you enable the USB debugging then where you will you are seeing the name of the emulator you will be seeing the name of your app name of your phone name of your phone and when you see the name of your phone then just click on the run button here and then the app will be installed on your phone uh, before that it will ask the permission of the user that whether you want to install the app or not just click on allow and then the app will be installed and you can perform the same operations uh, that's it guys so now we are done with all these things like we have the idea about the if else statement and the when statement we have built our first android app we have created an avd we run our app in the avd and we have the idea how to run our app in the phone also we learned about the button and how to add behavior to it and we have also the idea about the toast messages so here are some links the first one will lead you to the specific hardware requirements the hardware required to install android studio in your laptop or computer and the second one is the link for downloading android studio the uh, and the last one is the link for the Kotlin playground where we perform the operation uh, where we learn the if else and when statement so thank you guys thank you so much